Okay, so the scope of this video is going to be talking about Blue Line models, specifically Broadway Limited Blue Line, and uh, why they're appealing and also how you can upgrade them. So uh, I like to, I personally, one of the most fun things in this hobby for me right now is buying up old Broadway Limited models from uh, their initial models, which had QSI in them, uh, pretty bad by today's standard, and uh, also some of the Blue Line models. Um, what are Blue Line models? Well, they're a model that uh, Broadway Limited came out with in 2007, and these were kind of the link between the original QSI models, which were produced from about 2002 or so when Broadway Limited first came into the market, and um, up until about 2007 or so. So the Blue Line decoders, uh, from what I understand, were actually, uh, they had some things that were similar or manufactured by ESU. Uh, so they're similar to some of the very early lock sound decoders. Uh, this would be in the same era as like lock sound 3 or 3.5. Uh, the blue lines were roughly made from about 2007 to 2009. Um, with most Broadway models, there's really not a whole lot of difference um, in the tooling between several different versions. Uh, so like 3751 here, for example, um, was produced in the QSI... Um, line of models with the Paragon 1. It was also produced in the Blue Line, which is what this model is here. It was also produced in Paragon 2, but really there's not a whole lot of difference between any of the three of them, except for the packaging and the sound package that's in the, in the tender itself. I love to buy up these older uh, Broadway Limited models because you can usually find them for pretty cheap, um, and really all you have to do is just replace the sound in it and you end up with a pretty outstanding model after that. So I'm going to show you here um, some of the things that you do in helping to improve these. Um, the motors in these are excellent. Um, pretty much any Broadway is going to be weighted pretty good. It's going to have a great motor. So they're really great project engines, especially if you're wanting to put in, like this one's going to be getting uh, Soundtracks Economy. Uh, which is not vastly different than uh, the Tsunami 2 decoders that are out now. And Economy does happen to have the six chime whistle that I'm looking for for this one, which this one currently has. And what it runs with today in excursions is the six chime ATSF whistle. Um, when it first was running, if you're modeling the original era that it ran, it had a five chime, but I guess since about the 90s or so, it's worn a six chime. So it's going to be pretty much uh, modeling present day. Also has the oil tender. And one of the other cool details I think about 3751 is the like cab shades that are here. If you ever watch any videos of this engine running, and there's some pretty cool ones on uh, YouTube where it's running along a highway and people are pacing it. So looks really really cool I've always enjoyed really old things in a modern setting I just think it looks kind of cool and uh, from what I've read this is actually one of the older I think it actually is the oldest operating 484 in the United States so there's many many different 484s that are still running uh, this one just happens to be the oldest Not cool like some of the uh, streamlined engines if you're into that sort of thing, but for a traditional looking steam locomotive, you know, before they started doing the kind of outrageous colors and streamlines, this one's a pretty good one. But we're going to get into uh, talking about how to do these up here. So typically inside of the engine itself, you don't really need to touch anything in there. I'm probably going to upgrade the headlight, which for this one, you can simply just pull off this cover here and then that's accessible so that's pretty easy to upgrade some of them you will need to go uh, into greater lengths to get into the LEDs uh, for the tender here let me get this off of here I'm just going to pause it real quick and take the tender shell off Okay, so I've taken apart the tender here, which for a lot of these uh, either has screws that come in from the bottom or you can simply pull it up off the top. So I've already kind of gone ahead and removed everything that's in here and I'm going to show you some of what you'll probably want to get rid of and also what you'll want to save. So first and foremost is the decoder itself. So you want to pretty much unplug everything from that. And uh, also from this, 
you can actually get some usable parts out of this. So one thing I like to hold on to, if your model still comes with it, is the bypass plug. So these come in handy a lot of times if you're selling off an older DCC ready model and you may have gotten rid of the bypass plugs, you can just pop this in here and then sell the model and then the owner can run it on DC if they want to or they can re remove it and put in their own decoder. Also on here, for some models uh, the sound is better than others. I have a uh, Pennsylvania Railroad M1 that I actually still kept the blue line decoder in them. Uh, just because I really, really like the whistle that's included on it. Um, but with a lot of them, the sound isn't so good. Like I had an AC6000 where the uh, sound was really, really bad. Um, but, you know, it didn't all go to waste because this capacitor that's on here, which is this little purple piece, um, that can easily be reused for other projects. I mean, you can just chop that off and reuse it. Also, for a lot of the factory connectors, hold on to these uh, because if you run into issues where maybe a pin comes out and some of your other newer Broadway limited models or even other brands use these same style of connectors and a lot of times these are really hard to track down if you need a spare so I like to save all of these and I'll show you some of the uses for that also um, the speakers in the blue line models you can go ahead and keep these as long as they don't have damage so what you want to look for is a lot of times these have kind of crackly sound and that's because there's a buildup of metal shavings on the surface. So as long as you can clean those off of there, these are actually pretty good speakers. So the way that Broadway does it is these are independently 16 ohm speakers but they are wired in parallel which means that they produce an 8 ohm load. Now an 8 ohm load is yeah, heat ohm load is most commonly used with most decoders. Um, if you try to go lower than that and use like say two eight mil or eight ohm speakers, you're gonna either have to run them in 16 ohm or at four ohm. And if you're running at 16, you're basically gonna get half of the capability of your decoder. So it's not gonna be really loud. And if you try to run it at four ohm, it's simply not gonna run because the decoders are not four ohm stable. The only one I know of at this point that is 4 ohm stable is going to be ESU. And for steam, I really don't care for ESU. That could potentially get better with full throttle. Uh, but at the time of the making of this video, they don't really have those files out yet. Um, and they don't really have any whistle selections that are going to be on the same scale as what Tsunami 2 is, which is um, what this engine is going to get. Or I'm sorry, actually Economy, which is very, very similar to the Tsunami 2. So again, the speakers, you can reuse these as long as they're in good condition. And they're already wired up perfectly, so really all you have to do is chop off this connector here and then they can be wired right into the new harness. The other piece, most importantly, that you'll want to hold on to is the actual harness plug that goes from the decoder into the back of the locomotive. Um, and you'll want to, I mean, you just kind of just chop these off with the scissors, but it's better to use um, a longer length because you can always make something that's longer shorter whereas if you cut it too short you really can't go the other way and then you're having to make extra splices in there so I cut this pretty long I'm probably still going to be able to chop off about an inch or so on this harness if not a little bit more I like to be able to have this harness stick out about an inch or so but no more than an inch and you also want it to be able to move freely so the reason for that is when you're plugging this harness into the back of the engine, if it's kind of up too tight, you don't have any, you don't really have anything you can pull on to put it into the back of the engine. But you don't want it too long because what happens is if it's too long, then it tends to fold up and you have kind of this nasty clump of wires that's running between the tender and the locomotive, which I'm sure you've noticed on a lot of steam locomotives. Uh, doesn't particularly look really great when there's a big clump of uh, things right there on it. Okay, so the other thing here too is the two wires that are in the tender and these are wired to the tender track pickups and how you tell which side of the rails it's on is basically the front set's going to run off of one side of the rail and the rear set's going to run off of the other side of the rail. How you tell is to look at the uh, center of the wheels and you want to look for the insulator the ones that have the insulator on them It's the other side that actually produces the power and you'll want to match that up with 
the front of it here and I'll show you how to do that. The next part that you'll want to retain is this metal piece right here which is what originally the factory board was screwed down to and it mounts into the tender here and here. You also want to retain the two factory screws that are there. Um, you don't have to do it this way. I prefer to use this piece still as a mounting plate. So I'm just kind of laying that on here. It's something where my new decoder is going to be attached to, and this is the Ekonami decoder. And I've also started to trim some of the wires here. This is the factory Soundtracks harness that uh, came with it. I, I preferred um, something new that I'm trying to do is to cut the wire lengths down as opposed to having a big clump of wires in here. I just think it looks sloppy. Functionally, there's not really a difference. It's just I prefer a really clean look when I take the tender shell off. I just I'm really anal about my wiring, so that's something I want to look nice. So these are all going to get chopped down a little bit more. Again, I'm starting with longer lengths, and then you just trim it back slightly. Um, just you don't want it any longer than what it needs to be. You do want a little bit of give in here. You don't want things to be too short that everything's tight and has no flexibility whatsoever but I would say probably no more than probably three to five millimeters is really all the amount of stretch that you're going to need so like for instance uh, when this is mounted and screwed down here this one wire is going to be running to this back plate here and I just want a little bit of give in it but I don't want it to the point where it's you know super bound up there but I'll show you the end result of when this is wired up uh, the next thing is going to be speakers. So these speakers kind of just lay down into the shell here. Kind of just loosely putting in those. They're not exactly in there. But what I like to do with these is uh, glue them into place. So I'll show you how what I do with that here in a moment. But I think about that's that's pretty much it for the tear down and kind of the design of how things are going to be in the tender here. So the next part's going to be speaker installation and then pretty much what it looks like in figuring out the pin diagram for which wire goes to which item. So I'm going to show you which ones could go to which ones here. And it's pretty much the same standard wiring for almost every blue line locomotive. So if you know how to do this with one of them, you can pretty much figure it out with all of them. Not vastly different on QSI era or even on Paragon 2. However, on Paragon 2, because they all are equipped with a smoke unit, there's about two extra wires that tend to run to the front. Sometimes if it's a locomotive which has uh, fancier lighting, there may be other options there for marker lights or for uh, in some of the uh, engines, they may also have other little lighting effects that are in there or cab lighting. Um, this one doesn't really have anything other than a headlight, the motor, and the track pickup. So it's pretty much a six-pin layout. And that's all this is going to really include on here is just six pins. So it's just those six that you have to figure out, and I'm going to show you what those are. So I'm back with the shell here, and what we've done is put in the speakers. And we also use a small amount of micro crystal clear on those. And what I do... As this is another 32 millimeter here, is I'll put a light bead around this outside edge, and then when it goes into here, I'll put a light bead against the seam and this little plastic piece of where the speaker holds. And that does a number of things. One's it, it keeps it from vibrating, and it also acts sort of like a gasket. So again, it prevents against vibration. The other thing is I'd usually do a piece or two of the two-sided. Uh, two-sided foam tape here and then the mounting bracket will go over top of that and what that does is it keeps these speakers from ever vibrating up out of here it keeps them firmly planted down into here again reverse reversing uh, any type of vibration so we're going to go ahead and wire this together here Okay, so I went ahead and uh, screwed on the top plate here, which I have my decoder attached to. And you'll also see how that hits into the two-sided foam, so that's going to keep those speakers in place really nice. Also started running the rear headlight wire here, which is a common positive. And also, you'll want to put a resistor in the loop there 
uh, which I have it hooked up to the negative terminal for this LED here. Uh, if you don't use resistors, you will blow out your LED and then you're going to have to replace this bulb and use a resistor anyway. And you'll want to do the same thing for the front. I haven't gotten to that part here just yet. Also, the harness here for the speaker, which goes underneath. Can't really see that. Um, Come on, focus. There we go. So anyways, uh, this does hook up to the terminal here. And there's another little port, which is right here. And oddly enough, one of the wires from the old blue line decoder is actually the exact same size. So you can either use a soundtrack Keep Alive which is uh, one of these here and it just plugs into that port or you can just use a regular old capacitor something like this here and you pretty much just wire that up to here now it is important to note which side is actually positive and which is negative because if you wire up the capacitor wrong it can actually blow it out so with this one here just taking a look at the soundtracks connector I can pretty much tell from here which one's going to be negative and positive. Uh, typically the blue wire is going to be positive and the black wire is going to be your negative. But it just goes to show you can always reuse parts. So the next thing I'm going to do is uh, wire up one of the capacitors here and that's probably just going to sit in the back here in this empty space and also start working on hooking up the truck output wires up to this so that I can get power to the decoder and start testing it out make sure that my speakers are good and I won't have to replace those uh, if they don't work I do have another set of speakers that I can use there which is actually out of a Paragon 2 locomotive um, but in the next step we'll do a little bit more of the wiring here on the front side of the decoder because pretty much everything on the back side is wired up just got to test the rear headlight there and make sure that that works inside of the tender and then also hook up these power wires here and we'll get a little bit more into where did it go ah there it is the actual harness that plugs into the back of the locomotive so I'm starting to uh, tin the wires on that and that's gonna get wired into these here also using uh, heat shrink wrap, which I like to use this stuff, real thin, and you just kind of put it over your joints there, sort of like what I did here on the rear resistor. I don't know how well you can see that, but there is a small one here, right here, because that's actually the yellow wire, and then it goes into the insulator of that shrink wrap, and then the resistor, and then plugs onto the board. So that's just a solder mark that I did there. So that's it for this step here. Okay, so the next step here is I connected the power wires to the truck pickup wires here in the tender and also the motor wires. And I'll go over the pinouts of these little bit later on but one of the key things is here I don't have any uh, on the track pickups here I already went ahead and insulated those with the uh, shrink wrap and uh, I leave the motor ones open initially just to test just in case I have the polarity backwards and that, that happens a lot of times you'll hook up a decoder and it runs backwards when it should be going forward so it's easy enough for me to just flip those wires around if should I need to so we're now taking a look at the finished wired up product here. And everything is nice and firm in place here. I also like to put a zip tie in here just to prevent these wires from pulling out too far. Um, it doesn't really prevent their ability to push back in and you got some flexibility there which is good. That's what you want. So taking a look at most importantly the pin out here. Which wires go to what? So starting at the very left here, you're going to have left side track power. That is pin 1 
that's starting at the very left of this plug and this plug is the uh, exact orientation that it plugs into the back of the locomotive. So then you'll have motor, um, which this is the motor positive is actually what that's listed as. Um, depending on what how you wire it up, doesn't really matter too much. Um, if you get the motor polarity wrong, you just flip it and you run it the other way. Um, next up, you're going to have the white wire or the front headlight control. And you also want to have a resistor in line with that. If you don't have a resistor in line with that, you'll blow out your LED in the nose of the engine. Next up is pin 4, again going from the left to right. Pin 4 is going to be your LED power, um, or the common positive. So that's the blue wire that's off the decoder. That also runs to the LED that's on the back here. So I just made a little splice right here. So there's a wire that goes to the front and a wire that goes to the back. But it plugs into the same place off of the decoder. Next up is a wheel sensor, which is pin number 5. Uh, that's actually not used in this situation because um, the Tsunami 2, actually this isn't a Tsunami 2, this is an Econami, um, does not have a cam sensor input. Um, I think on TCS WOW you could wire this to the cam sensor input. I'm not sure if it would work or not. That's something I still have to try. And then next up you have your other motor lead here, which is the motor negative. Again, if these are flip-flopped, you just swap them around to get whatever direction correct for your locomotive and then the very outermost one here is your right track input which the track inputs are basically just your power off the rails um, and the tender here the rear truck's going to do one side and then the front truck's going to do the other side and we've already gone over how to determine which is which on that if you get it wrong um, you'll actually get a short that's detected uh, by your uh, command system so if you if you put it on the track and it's starting to short out when you're connected up to the locomotive, that's probably because you got one of the wires flip-flopped for the uh, track leads. So we're going to put the shell on it here and uh, get the motor running here. And then probably next I'm going to go over the... Uh, I'm actually going to replace the LED on the front headlight while I'm at it here just because I don't like the color of the original one. Um, the rear headlight here, I do kind of like the way that looks, so I'm just going to leave that go. All right, so all of my testing has been completed here. Everything works. Um, found a couple little issues, um, such as some headlight bleed through. Fix that up. Um, out of uh, shipping, just because of the way that these are packed, which is with styrofoam, um, the rear deck plate kind of broke off a little bit, so I had to glue that back together, and that's just the little walkway that runs from the back of the engine to the tender. So that's back on there now. Also took a look at the drivetrain, greased everything up, uh, cleaned out any type of like fibers or animal hair or whatever was in the uh, the valve gear there. Um, so that's out of there. So it's all cleaned up. Um, it does have some wheel wear on it. So, I mean, this engine's definitely been run. Um, it was having a little bit of a squeaking issue from the rear trailing truck also, but that's greased up now, so that should be fine. Uh, everything's fit and secure, nothing's hanging off, everything, all the parts and pieces are back together again. So, we're going to take a look at how it runs here, and I think you'll be pretty impressed. This thing is uh, insanely loud. And it's got a very bright headlight on it.
So there it is, Blue Line. Don't be afraid to buy these. They're a pretty good deal. Um, like I said, you can usually scoop them up pretty cheap, um, and they're great engines to modify. And if you're looking for even maybe just a sound, an engine to uh, experiment with and maybe do your own first DCC sound install, these are a great way to do it. And you can find these a lot of times uh, extremely cheap at shows. I found a uh, Pennsylvania Railroad uh, M1B for about $120. And the sound was actually already pretty good in it, and I just put a decoder in it for about $15. So I mean, you got a DCC sound engine for about $135. Uh, this one was a little bit more than that, obviously, and it's got an Ekonami in here, which is about $68 on its own. So, I mean, this is uh, between a two and $300 engine with everything that's put into it, which you're really not going to find the Paragon 2 model of this for any less than that. The only advantage of Paragon 2 over this, of course, is that it's going to have uh, smoke, which the blue lines did not have smoke. But again, in closing, uh, outstanding models, and I'm going to do another video in the future here explaining some of the differences in how to update a QSI era, uh, Broadway Limited also. But this is it for the blue line video. Hope you enjoyed it. 